Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today's question comes from David Lee. He is having a problem with a portable do-it-yourself VHF transceiver. In other words, he built it from a kit or from plants, okay? The radiated harmonics are very strong and would easily fail the FCC requirements by at least 10 dB. If that's the case, they are down a ways. I did test a radio once where the harmonic was actually stronger than the fundamental, but this is not the case here, it's down. Now, the question is, how did he measure that? We don't know. He says, when I connect my transceiver to a spectrum analyzer using an RG316 cable, the measured harmonics are approximately 10 dB below the FCC requirements. So down by 20 dB. What do you think is the cause for this? When you're dealing with UHF, VHF, okay, you've got to remember that you're dealing with stuff that doesn't always want to stick to the inside of the coax cables, okay? This right here is an example of an RF attenuator. If you put a powerful signal into a spectrum analyzer that's stronger than 10 dBm, which is 1 one hundredth of a watt, you risk breaking the spectrum analyzer. That's what the attenuators are for. I just got this one. I ordered it using channel funds from Amazon, and we're going to be doing a video on this and testing it. So I've got a signal generator and an O-scope, and I can very quickly tell how much attenuation is built into these various switches. The idea is that various combinations of switches can create any amount of attenuation that you want. Now, if you're going to take a radio, you want to have this come off like a T because you want to terminate your radio in a 50 ohm load. And then the signal that goes through this, the oscilloscope is a very high impedance load. Okay. And so just throwing resistors in series with it is not going to do anything. These are paralleled. Okay. Everything from 1 dB up to 20 dB, 40 dB, 60 dB, 70 dB and then minus 6.3 in this, and you get 80 dB. And you can put in one more to get 82 dB at the max. So that's quite a range of attenuation, really helps you home in on what you're doing. Now, you have to consider, and this is a very important point, that there's two ways. One, use a dummy load antenna. I have a dummy load antenna right here that's from Heathkit. I've had it for years and years and years, and it works both on HF and VHF, okay? I have a little device here that will tap a tiny amount of power and push it toward the spectrum analyzer. It's got a little adjustment here, which is only about plus or minus 6 dB. But this gives you plenty of attenuation, even for some fairly powerful radios, okay? Now, here's your load. That's not a perfect load. The antenna that comes with the radio is part of the system. This is my tiny spectrum analyzer. And the tiny spectrum analyzer comes with an antenna. This is actually a GMRS radio, but it'll work the same. I'm going to put the antenna on the radio. I'm going to turn on the spectrum analyzer, okay? And then here's my graph from zero up to nine gigahertz, okay? Now I'm going to press the button here to transmit a few watts and we're going to wait for this thing to give us a nice clean signal. Okay, there we go. There's our nice clean signal. Now I'm going to move it just a little further away. So you see the one up there at the top? That is the primary signal, the fundamental. And then you'll note that the second harmonic is 10, 20, 30, 45 dB below. Now, note here that I'm testing the entire system, the radio and the antenna, because the antenna will almost certainly have some reactants that it will feed back and it will interfere with the signal coming out to cause it to change slightly. Could cause the R amplifier to create a harmonic or something like that. In this particular case, we're testing the entire system. This is a pretty good radio, so uh, they do pretty well. Okay, the point is that uh, the antenna is part of the system and you want to make sure that you test the entire system. Now you are mentioning, since this is a portable thing, that you're using RG316 cable. That's pretty thin stuff. 
Okay, you're going to have a lot of losses in there. Now those losses are going to change your measurements. Okay, you've tried using ferrite chokes on the 316 cable around it or wrapping it through one, which by the way should do the job. So the fact that it make it not work is unusual. Okay, there's something more going on here. And almost no change in the second and third harmonic levels. This is some of that cable that you were talking about. You wind this down through the toroid. Make sure it's a toroid for the right frequency. Because if it just works at HF and falls off on VHF, I'm not going to help you any. Okay, toroids to me are a black art. Anyway, um, that's one thing you can do. Go out and buy the antenna with something like this which is a tiny spectrum analyzer. You get these from randlelectronics.com. R-A-N-D-L. R -A -N -D -L. And look around for that. Those are the authorized distributors of the hardware version. Now the hardware version is completely open source, meaning anyone can build it and sell it. Okay, but to be sure that you've got the one that coordinates properly with the people who are in charge of that particular open source item. Make sure everything matches. That's why I recommend RNL. Plus you get a nicer case. Okay, so there you have it. I hope that helps a little bit with that. Again, try it out with your antenna. You might try taking along some RG58 or RG8X cable for your antenna rather than that very lossy cable that you mentioned. So there you have it. Until we next meet, Next time you're on a mountaintop, 73.